Hey friends, today we are going to be looking at how we can use text features and search tools to locate information that is relevant to a given topic. We are going to begin by understanding nonfiction text with examples of text features and explanations on how you can use these different text features in your reading. What are text features? Well, authors might include text features to help readers better understand what you are reading. They might be not be written in the text, but they could be written in text such as textbooks, articles in a magazine, newspapers, reports, web pages, and other forms of nonfiction text. Remember, nonfiction texts are texts that are real. These are our informative texts that we are reading. Let's take a look at one type of a text feature known as a table of contents. A table of contents lists the major parts of a book along with their page numbers. Here it can help you find all of the information in a story that you need to learn about and how everything is organized. The information about where animals live can be found on page three in animal habitats. So if I wanted to find information about where animals live, I would look at pages three and four of this story all, or this chapter in all about animals. The next type of a text feature that you might see as you are reading an informational story or a nonfiction text is titled an index. Here, an index is usually listed in the back of the book for you to find the listing of different names, events, terms, and things that you might find in the story and where you might locate them using their page numbers. If you notice, all of these vocabulary words or key terms have page numbers listed right after them so that you would know where to find them. If I was to look up animal food, I would go to page two of my story. The next type of text feature that you might have heard about is a glossary. Now, a glossary and an index are very different. A, an index tells you where to find information using those vocabulary words in the story or where you can find information on that topic. A glossary kind of gives us definitions or it tells us key terms in alphabetical order and it tells us how to pronounce the word and gives us that word meaning to better understand the word and the subject. Here, I might better understand the word adapt. If I didn't know what the word adapt meant, I could look it up in the glossary in the back of the book to understand that it means to change in order to survive in new environments. The next type of text feature that you might notice or recognize is a title. Titles are going to tell us the topics of a text. They usually will show us the main idea and they help us to know what we are going to be learning about. Here in this image, the titles all talk about space. So all of these nonfiction articles are all about space. The next type of text feature is a subheading. Subheadings are uh, different headings that divide text into different pieces or different sections, as you may notice. If you've ever seen a text that's chunked out, into different paragraphs, you might see a subheading on top of that paragraph explaining to us what we are going to be reading about. So it helps the reader to be able to read and locate information a little bit quickly than having to skim through possibly a whole article that may not be chunked out. If we were to find, an in, find out information about a fire ant, it tells us 
that a fire ant is a type of ant, so the reader would look in types of ants. I would be able to find my information under this subheading. Different types of text are often text features that we are familiar with. We often see texts that are in bold, means they are in bigger, brighter print, color, and italics. Italics is this type of text right here where it looks a little slanted or angled. The style and color of these texts bring our eyes to these different types of words. You might notice some words that are in bold or in color. They are used to help us stand, help these words stand out. And they draw the reader's attention to this important information. The italics help the reader by focusing the reader on an answer to a question. So if you had a question such as, why are the South's wetlands so important? It's focusing your information on that question before you read that paragraph. The next type of text feature that we are familiar with are photographs and illustrations. Now, when we are reading a fictional story, we are used to having pictures or photographs that are drawn by the illustrator. When you are reading a non-fiction text, you have photographs and illustrations which give us real pictures of information in a visual way. They help us to tell the story and they also work with the words and headings to teach different materials. So these photos might help the reader understand the text about different animals. The pictures would help me understand what the animals look like and maybe where they live. Ah, another text feature that go along with illustrations and photographs are often captions. A caption normally follows a, an illustration shown in a picture. So normally it comes underneath a photograph. Notice the caption here says, these gold coins were found on the ocean floor. Therefore, it is describing what is happening in this picture. If the caption wasn't included in this picture, I may not know what is going on at the bottom of the ocean. I may not know that this is a picture of the bottom of the ocean. I might think it's just a bunch of coins. One more text feature is a text box. The text box contains, contains the mystery to help create interest for the reader. So a text box gives us more information about our topic rather than just what is in the article. Here, often the writer will give us information using interesting facts and usually some things that we want to know about the topic. They usually will help readers understand by creating an interest or emphasizing important information. You can see here that this text box stands out to us as a reader. So right away, my eyes might go to this text box to see what's going on. Another text feature that we use are often maps. So these are drawings that show the shape of land, geographical, political, or historical features. So these are a visual form and they help us to understand where events take place or where they happened. They can also show us how far away an event is from where we are located. We often see diagrams in nonfiction text as well. Diagrams help us to explain how something works, such as this volcano. This diagram helps the reader to better understand the flow of magma in a volcano. In order to understand the diagram though, we must read the different parts of the diagram, such as the labels, the captions, and the numbered parts. They help us to understand the steps or how information works. 
As I've mentioned, the diagram below helps the reader to understand the parts of a volcano and how volcanoes erupt. Tables are often another common way that writers use text features to convey information. They organize large amounts of information. They present all types of data from numbers to amounts to calendars and often menus and they help the reader to compare information. If I had a question that said, how would a table about volcano eruptions help the reader understand volcano? I might be able to see when these different volcanoes took place and how often volcanoes took place in these locations. Timelines are also very helpful text features when we are reading nonfiction stories. They show important events in chronological or time order, starting with the earliest event and ending with the one that is the most current or closest to the most current event. Timelines help us to better understand the order of events and how one event may have began and then led to another or the end of an event. So if I didn't know how computers were built or I didn't have any knowledge about the first computers, I might be able to look at this and see that the computers actually generated with our first calculator and ends in 1994 with the first modern computer. You guys have done a great job learning about the different types of text features and how they can help you to understand what you are reading. Good luck today in your coursework, friends.